We've seen a wave of cases that have pitted religious conservatives against same-sex supporters. And one of them in Colorado, where two years ago, a couple wanted to buy a wedding cake, but they were refused service when the, baker's, the bakery's owner uh, found out that they were gay. Now, the owner's attorney, Nicole Martin, she joins us. She's on the phone with us. Uh, we have in front of a camera Robert Boston, Director of Communications at uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State. It's good to have both of you. Thank you. Good to be Good with morning. You. Good morning. Hey, Nicole, let's start with you. Uh, the judge sided with the couple in this. Uh, tell us, where does this case stand now? And take a few seconds to explain your legal argument. Well, what's important for your viewers to understand is that my client, Jack Phillips, serves everyone in the community, and he always has. He just does not serve all events or communicate all messages. And everyone can agree, Victor, that a wedding cake is qualitatively different than a box of brownies. It's special. It's an iconic symbol of marriage, and it says something. And so because it says something, it's protected under the First Amendment, our very first freedom, and indeed the cornerstone of everything that America holds dear. Okay. It really, is it really America anymore if the government can force you under the threat of jail and fines to speak a message that is deeply at odds with your conscience. All right, Robert, what's wrong with that? I mean, this country was founded on religious freedoms. What's wrong with what she just said? Well, I really think that this is an attempt to, to take the shabby doctrine of discrimination and bigotry and dress it up in the noble garment of religious freedom. Uh, we have public accommodation laws in this country. And in the state of Colorado, gays and lesbians are protected by those laws. What I think some religious conservatives are after here really is a new type of Jim Crow. Back in the days when certain people couldn't eat in restaurants or stay in hotels, get served by businesses. We've moved way beyond that. And I think it's kind of sad that we have these situations now where people are saying, I'm not going to serve you at my business because I don't like your lifestyle. It hasn't worked in court so far, and I don't think it's going to be ultimately successful. What about that, as you heard from Robert, that there are many people who see this, Nicole, as a way to just discriminate? I mean, what stops your client uh, or any baker or person who owns a, a bridal shop or hair salon to put a sign in front of their window if, you know, the Arizona law is passed uh, and signed it into law that just says no service in celebration of same-sex unions? The law shouldn't be stopping people from posting free speech in their businesses that's protected under the First Amendment. Frankly, I so, find So you believe that they should have the right to be able to put up the sign that says no service to, to any celebration of same-sex union? If it's based on their deeply held religious beliefs, if it's based in the First Amendment, absolutely. Well, and okay. that's What's what next? A sign up case. saying we don't but serve Jews? A sign up fact. saying we don't serve Muslims? A sign up that says we don't frankly, serve atheists? That is fundamentally frankly, at odds with America and the values that we hold dear Jim in this Crow laws, I find it obscene. These bills expand freedom for everybody. <laughs> they Everyone expand freedom by Hold on, Robert. Let, 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 let her finish, Robert. Go ahead, Nicole. Everyone is still free to live their lives as they choose. And these bills protect that right. Let me tell you why... Let me give you a glimpse into why you're seeing a spate of these bills. Because the Supreme Court out of the New Mexico decided that there was a price for your First Amendment rights. Because the judge in my case decided that the speech and the rainbow-colored cake of the plaintiffs was more valuable than Mr. Phillips's First Amendment rights. And now today, our Colorado legislature is poised to take away the religious exemption of mosques, temples, churches, pastors, take that religious exemption away under our public accommodation statute in Senate Bill 118. Let me, That's why you're seeing these bills. Nicole, let me, there's a great fear. I've got to ask you a question. I know we're running on time, but I've got to get this question in. Your, your legal strategy, from what I understand, your client is Christian. He believes in the Bible, and he considers, I believe it's Leviticus 18.22 uh, that says, uh, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It's an abomination. So to serve that same-sex couple would be contrary to his belief in the word of the Bible. Okay, so let me then go to another portion of the Bible. Again, it's not moral. It's the legal argument. Epistle of James, second chapter, verses 8 through 11, which says, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted as transgressors. For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble on one point, he is guilty of all. So again, not moral, but legally. If your basis of your argument is that your client believes in the words of that Bible, is there not a huge legal vulnerability, maybe even a strong legal counterpoint, that that Bible, which he holds as the reason he should not serve them, not only says that God is impartial, but also that he's compelled to serve them and to do otherwise would be a sin. Isn't that case a bit vulnerable? I don't think so. First of all, Victor, I'm not a theologian, but what I do know is that Jesus loves all, no matter who they are, no matter what they do. But I'm pretty sure that the Savior of all mankind didn't come down and die on the cross for our salvation so that we could participate in the sin of others. You know, we have, the government has a compelling interest in making sure nobody goes to that wedding reception or that wedding celebration and throws stones. But the government does not have a compelling interest to make sure that we participate in right. that wedding or that celebration. Let me get Robert in, speech, in very quickly. Let me get Robert in very quickly because I've gone well over time. Absolutely. But Robert, let me ask you this. Which protections would you be okay with? Are there any protections that you would support? Well, look, houses of worship have the right to decide who they'll admit as members, who they'll give their sacraments to. That's secure under the First Amendment to the Constitution. But when you open a business, you must meet the public accommodation laws, which means you must serve the public. If you're not willing to serve the public, simple answer, don't open a business.